All right, so I just finished recording this lesson and then discovered my microphone was not on. So that was frustrating, but uh, it is what it is. I am doing this for the second time now. Uh, so we are going to be focusing on lesson five. If you go into the files section of Canvas, you'll find a blank version of this lesson that you can use. Don't feel obligated to. If you want to just write things down on a page of paper, that works too. I do suggest you writing and taking notes um, since that helps you know turn things into long-term memory. Um, we are going to be looking at the double angle formulas, the half angle formulas, and we're going to use them uh, for sine, cosine, and tangent. You can find this information in the textbook on page 477 to 482. Uh, no obligation to go there, but it's always nice to see someone else explain something to get things in multiple uh, ways. So let's go ahead and get started. Sine double angle formula. So I want a formula for sine two theta. I want the formula for the double of an angle theta in terms of just that angle. Okay. So go ahead and try to derive it yourself. Uh, hint, you're going to use formulas that we have already derived geometrically. And um, here is the trick. So sine two theta, that's just theta plus theta. Sine theta plus theta, that is what we already know. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So uh, sine theta plus theta is sine the first angle. Sine, cosine the second angle. Oh, just theta again. Sine theta, cosine theta, plus cosine theta, sine theta. And with that said, uh, commutativity, we have sine, cosine, cosine, sine. They're the same objects. So let's go ahead and add them. We have two of them, two sine theta, cosine thetas. Okay. And there is our formula for sine two theta. Let's keep going. The next thing I want to look at is cosine two theta. All right, All right. let's not reinvent the wheel here. Uh, we'll look at a geometric proof later. Let's just approach this in the exact same way. Cosine theta plus theta. Okay. Cosine theta plus theta, that's cosine, cosine, sine, sine, sine. If you slow it down to a one half speed, uh, you'll hear me say a G in that first sign. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine, sine. Okay. And there, real quick, is a formula for cosine two theta, cosine squared, theta minus sine squared theta. But now, before we proceed, look at this new formula. Cosine two theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. There are two more formulas that we can generate for cosine two theta. Right? This is formula number one. There are two more formulas. Right? And I want you to think about how we can get them. Right. Hint, this looks like the Pythagorean identity, but it's not. It's a little bit different. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. But cosine squared theta, here we go. If you haven't thought already, go ahead and follow along. Cosine squared theta, that's just 1 minus sine squared theta. And there is our second formula. One minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta, that's one minus two sine squared thetas. And that is another formula for cosine two theta. Right? I wanna jump back real quick. Um, sine two theta doesn't have this property. We don't have any squares. So there's only one formula here for sine two theta. Uh, but we got so far two formulas for cosine two theta. And uh, think about how we can get that last one. Right. Sine squared theta, that's 1 minus cosine squared theta, Pythagorean identity. And 1 minus 2 times 1 minus cosine squared theta, that's going to be 1 minus 2, that's negative 1. And uh, negative 2 times negative cosine squared theta, that's 2, positive 2, cosine squared theta. There is our third formula. All right, so we have three formulas 
we have cosine squared minus sine squared, we have 1 minus 2 sine squared, and we have 2 cosine squared minus 1. Three formulas. Um, the ones that you're going to want to use, um, it depends on the scenario. If you know what sine theta is and you want to know what cosine 2 theta is, um, this is going to be the formula you want to use because you know sine theta. Um, if you only know sine theta, this one's useless because you don't know cosine theta. If uh, you only know sine theta, this one's useless. Same reasons. So it just depends on the scenario. And then as you get practice, you'll know which one works best. All right, so we have sine 2 theta. We have three formulas for cosine 2 theta. Let's get tangent 2 theta. So this one, not very interesting. Um, once again, let's utilize the same strategy. Let's break that 2 theta up into theta plus theta and utilize the tangent formula. So tangent, tangent, 1, sine, tangent, tangent. So we got tangent theta, tangent the first angle, plus tangent the second angle, all over 1 minus tan theta, tan theta. All right. So we have 2 tan theta all over 1 minus tan squared theta. Right. That is our formula for tangent 2 theta. So nothing special there, but um, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and uh, use them. So if you're following along in the packet, I'm jumping to page 2. Um, and uh, what page 2 presents is a problem uh, as follows. We have if sine of theta is equal to 3 fourths, then what is sine of 2 theta? Um, and uh, there's a problem here because if I know what sine of theta is, um, I don't necessarily know what sine of 2 theta is. Um, and here's a picture why. So if I have an angle, uh, if I know that the sine of that angle is 3 fourths, there's actually two places that angle can be. There are two angles between 0 and 2 pi, one in the first quadrant and one in the second quadrant, where the y coordinate on the unit circle is a 3 fourths, either here or here. Um, so the sine of 2 times this angle, um, it's going to be different depending on which angle it is. Right. Sine of 2 times this, um, 3 fourths, it might be a first quadrant angle. Uh, 2 theta might be a second quadrant angle. Um, but if theta is in the second quadrant, um, let's say it's, I don't know, um, 2 pi over 3. Uh, 2 times that's 4 pi over 3. That is a third quadrant angle. And if it's 5 pi over 6, um, that's 10 pi over 6. That's 5 pi over 3. That's going to be a third fourth quadrant angle so two times this angle it it could be any any in any quadrant right so the solution to this um, we need more information and so on this second page we see that the angle is between zero and pi over two so um, this problem we are looking at an angle in the first quadrant and the sine of that angle is 3 fourths. What is sine 2 theta? So uh, let's do it. Let's find out what sine 2 theta is. So sine 2 theta is equal to, uh, if you check back to the formulas, we have sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. So 2 sine theta cosine theta. And uh, so uh, we know what sine theta is. It's 3 fourths. Right? So we have 2 times 3 fourths. Um, uh, but we don't know what cosine theta is. We need to figure out what cosine theta is. Um, but here's the trick. As always, give yourself a picture. We are a first quadrant angle. And we know that the sine is 3 fourths. Um, so let's go ahead and use Sokotoa. Opposite over hypotenuse, 3 fourths. And then the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, 16 minus 9 is 7, the square root of 7. We have um, the square root of 16 minus 9. And then uh, there we have revealed what cosine theta is. It is 
opposite, sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse. So root 7 over 4. And uh, just a little bit of simplification reveals that our answer is 3 root 7 over 8. Right, The 2 reduces that to 2. 2 times 2 is 8. 3 root 7 left on the top. So um, that is a little bit of how to use the double angle formulas. Um, if you are following along in the packet, we have a few other problems here. I'm not going to do them in this video, but feel free to do them if you'd like. Um, same scenario. Um, sine theta is 3 fourths. Our angle is in the first quadrant. Um, Question B is, what is cosine 2 theta? Question C is, what is tan 2 theta? And question D is, what is cosine 3 theta? Go ahead and try those if you'd like. Um, I'm going to reveal the answers so that you can check them when you're done. Cosine 2 theta ends up being negative 1 eighth. Uh, tan 2 theta ends up being negative 3 root 7. And uh, the cosine of 3 theta, um, this is a little bit more tricky, but think about how you can solve it. Uh, that's going to be negative 5 root 7 over 16. All right, so go ahead and check your answers when you're done with those. Um, but I'm going to proceed into the half angle formulas. So I want a formula for sine theta divided by 2 in terms of functions of theta. Um, and this one's a little bit more tricky, but my hint to you, if you want one, is uh, we have this following formula that we've just derived. Cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And uh, th this is where the money is. Because this formula, in actuality, says cosine of twice an angle is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of the angle. So nothing is stopping us from saying, hey, I'm going to write this formula as follows. Cosine theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta divided by 2. These are saying the exact same thing. These two formulas here. It's just saying that given an angle, this formula holds true if this is twice that angle. So these formulas are the same thing, just written in a new way. Right? And this is our formula, basically. We want a formula for sine theta divided by 2. And all that is left to do is simplify. So um, let's do it. So sorry about that. We have cosine theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. I'm um, sorry, theta divided by 2. And if we do some uh, simplification, we get 2 sine squared theta divided by 2 is equal to cosine sorry, 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. We get sine squared theta divided by 2 is equal to 1 minus cosine theta all over 2. And then um, we square root and we get our formula, the half angle formula, plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. A little ugly, but it is what it is. It is a half angle formula. Given sine of theta divided by 2, we can evaluate this if we just know what the cosine of the numerator is. I just want to point out before I proceed, actually, that there's one other formula here that is quite useful. And that is, uh, it's something called the power reduction formula. And it is as follows. 
we have this formula here. Sine squared theta divided by 2 is equal to 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. If I revert back to this form where I have double angles rather than half angles, I get sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. We call this the power reduction formula because it takes a squared sine and turns it into a non-squared cosine. We are reducing the power of the function from a square to a, um, a, a non-square, a linear term. So this is a quite useful formula. We're not going to focus on it too much, but uh, put that one in the back of your brain. It will appear again in the future. Moving along, however, let's look at uh, cosine theta divided by 2. And uh, we're not going to reinvent the wheel here. We are going to use similar techniques. Go ahead and try to do it on your own. Um, but for those who just want to proceed, here we go. Um, we have the formula cosine 2 theta is equal to 1. Oops, sorry. is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, and we can use that same technique. Let's go ahead and write this as cosine theta is equal to cosine 2 cosine squared theta divided by 2 minus 1. Right? And this, this will get us there. So cosine theta divided by 2, what is it? Well, let's look at what cosine squared theta divided by 2 minus 1. Solve this for cosine theta divided by 2. So we get a cosine theta plus 1 is equal to cosine 2 cosine squared theta divided by 2. We're going to divide by 2. Cosine theta plus 1 all over 2 is equal to cosine squared theta divided by 2. And then our final formula cosine theta divided by 2, that is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine theta all over 2. Let me jump back here real quick. Um, oh, I remember the plus or minus. Cool. I was worried I forgot it. All right, we'll come back to that plus or minus later. Uh, let's not concern ourselves with it right now. But uh, it, it's pretty easy to deal with. We'll, we'll check it out later. All right. So cosine theta divided by 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. All right. Let's jump to tangent theta divided by 2. This one's annoying, but I think you're going to like it in the long run. So tangent theta divided by 2. Don't overthink it. There is a very cool geometric proof here. But let's just do the algebraic one, the one let's get into the nitty gritty tangent of theta divided by 2. That is sine theta divided by 2 over cosine theta divided by 2. And that is going to get a little bit nasty, but we'll deal with it as we do with everything. Go ahead and 1 minus cosine theta all over 2. And down here we have 1 plus cosine theta all over 2. Right? Um, fact, the square root of A over the square root of B is equal to uh, the square root of A divided by B. Yay. Um, and so let's go ahead and utilize that. Uh, we're going to have plus or minus the square root of the whole thing. So 1 minus cosine theta all over 2, all over 1 plus cosine theta, all over 2. Sweet. And then, um, fun fact, the 2's go away, and we are left with our formula. One minus cosine theta, all over 1 plus cosine theta. All right, I'll write the formula again. Uh, 
we have tangent. Theta divided by 2 is equal to plus or minus, we'll address that later, the square root of 1 minus cosine theta all over 1 plus cosine theta. All right. Not the most attractive formula, but uh, there is something that we can do, actually. Because I want you to take a moment and think about how we can get rid of this square root. If we can get rid of this square root, I promise you it will look nicer. All right. How can we get rid of square roots? All right, don't forget this is a. All right, how can we get rid of square roots? And the answer is right here. All right, we need to have squares here, and there's a very clever way to get those squares. Think about it. I'm going to proceed. So uh, tangent theta divided by 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta all over 1 plus cosine theta. And I want to force some square roots. Uh, squares, so um, let's multiply by some conjugates. 1 minus cosine theta, 1 minus cosine theta. Think about why this is going to do exactly what I want. All right, difference of <clears throat> squares. 1 plus cosine theta, 1 minus cosine theta. That's going to be 1 minus cosine squared theta, that looks strikingly similar. 1 minus cosine times 1 minus cosine, that's just 1 minus cosine quantity squared. All right. Do you see it? 1 minus cosine squared theta, that is 1. Here it comes. Sine squared Pythagorean identity. Thank you, Pythagoras. 1 minus cosine theta on the top. All quantities squared. We have two squared quantities underneath the square root. We can get our boom. But like, think about why those absolute values actually do not matter. Think about why those absolute values actually do not matter, because the actual answer is 1 minus cosine theta all over sine theta. All right, so we have two formulas. We have tan of theta divided by 2 is equal to uh, plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. And we also have tan theta divided by 2 is equal to 1 minus cosine theta divided by sine theta. Right. I want a third one. All right, that third one is going to come exactly the way tangent theta divided by 2 equals 1 minus cosine theta over sine theta came. We are going to multiply this fraction by the numerator's conjugate. All right, so let's do it. One minus cosine theta, one plus cosine theta. We're going to multiply this thing by one plus cosine theta over one plus cosine theta. We are going to get a difference of squares in the numerator, and we're going to get a uh, quantity squared in the denominator. So here it is one minus cosine squared theta and one plus cosine theta quantity squared. And then uh, the numerator becomes um, sine squared theta. The denominator becomes 1 plus cosine theta quantity squared. And then the squares disappear because of the square root. We get sine theta.
theta is equal to 1 plus cosine theta. That is our third formula. So the third formula is, sorry about that, tan theta divided by 2 is equal to 1, sorry, sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. Okay. So the one formula has, uh, both formulas have sine theta in them. Uh, the one formula has 1 minus cosine theta on the top, and the other formula has 1 plus cosine theta in the denominator. Okay. Those are our three formulas for tangent theta divided by 2. Whew. All right, so let's use them a few times. And we'll only use them once, actually. Um, I'll show you the other example. Um, I'll show you what the other example is, but I'll let you guys do that. So let's evaluate cosine pi over 8. Right, so not pi over 3, not pi over 6, not pi over 4. It is not a multiple of those. However, it is half of one of them. So um, my hint to you here, or my trick to you here, is to write divided by 2. Because if we're going to use the half angle formulas, we want a 2 in the denominator hence half. So go ahead and think about what the numerator needs to be so that these two equations are equal, sorry, these two expressions are equal, pi over 4. Cool, All right? And then we have a formula now, the cosine of pi over 4 divided by 2, that is plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine numerator angle all over 2. All right, so um, uh, we'll talk about what this plus or minus means in just a second. Uh, we have the square root of 1 plus root 2 over 2 all over 2 and uh, simplifying this I believe we get this plus or minus the square root of 2 plus root 2 over 4 um, which leaves our final answer to be the cosine of pi over 8 is uh, the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 all over 2 outside the root. All right, there was a plus or minus here. What do we do with it? All right, cosine of pi over 8, that is a first quadrant angle. Cosine is positive. In the first quadrant so the final answer is we must choose plus or minus and here we are choosing plus pi over 8 is a first quadrant angle the answer here is 2 plus root 2 all over 2 very beautiful answer cool all right, what I have done in this video is we derived a formula for sine 2 theta we derived three formulas for cosine 2 theta. We, we derived a formula for tangent 2 theta. We used the sine double angle formula. And then we didn't do these, but hopefully you went and practiced a little bit and solved and got the same answers. We also derived um, a formula for sine theta divided by 2. This page is a little messy. I apologize. I was doing some scratch work. Um, in figuring out the uh, formula for sine theta divided by 2, plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2, we also um, touched on the power reduction formula. Sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. Okay. There's also a power reduction formula for cosine theta divided by 2. I urge you to think about what that is. Uh, but the formula of merit here is cosine theta divided by 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine theta divided by 2. Then we got three formulas for tangent theta divided by 2. This one right here, this one right here, and this one right here. Um, lots of different ones there. Right. It's just plug and chug from there. And then we did a little bit of practice um, with cosine pi over 8. So I'll be posting a uh, problem set for you guys to do uh, in regards to problems that use this information. Um, and then we will 
talk about the solutions to those later. If you have any questions that you just need answered right now, don't feel uh, shy to shoot me an email. Uh, but I will see you guys during my office hours. Have a awesome uh, Monday.